We are going to find the derivative of the product from n equals 1 to 16 of x plus 1 over n evaluated at x equals 0. If you're not familiar with this high notation, this is the notation for a product. It's basically like the sigma for a sum, except we're multiplying things. So what this is telling us, this inside expression that we're looking at here, that's going to be x plus, for n equals 1, we get 1 over 1, then times x plus 1 over 2, times x plus 1 over 3, and so on until we get x plus 1 over 16. And we want to take the derivative with respect to x of this and find that value when x is equal to 0. So this is a pretty big product. The first thing that we have to understand is how the product rule works when we're multiplying more than two functions. So let's quickly go over that to start. If we take the derivative of a product of three functions, say f of x times g of x times h of x, the first thing we can do is split it up into two parts and then apply the product rule on that. So we can say f of x is our first function, and we're multiplying that by g of x, h of x. So in this case, we can apply the normal product rule. First, we'll take the derivative f prime of x times g of x h of x, and then we'll add f of x times the derivative with respect to x of our second product here, g of x, h of x. And this second product is again a product of only two functions, so we can apply the product rule on this. So we have f prime of x, g of x, h of x from before, and then over here we can start by differentiating g of x, so we'll get plus f of x g prime of x, h of x, and finally we add differentiating h of x. So what we'll notice in this version of the product rule for three different functions is that in each of the terms that we're adding here, one of the functions is being differentiated. We have f prime, g prime, and h prime. All the other functions are staying the same, and then we add those together at the end. So when we take this idea and we extend it to when we're looking at a product of 16, what we're going to do is have a sum, instead of three terms, we'll have a sum of 16 different terms, and in each of those terms, we'll differentiate just one of the terms in this product. So let's write out what some of those terms when we differentiate will look like. First of all, let's say we're differentiating x plus 1 over 1 and leaving all the other functions the same. That would be the first step in our product rule. In that case, the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1. So this term essentially goes away, and we're going to get x plus 1 half times x plus 1 third, and so on to x plus 1 sixteenth. After that, we differentiate x plus 1 half and leave everything else. The derivative of x plus 1 half is again just going to be 1. So we get x plus 1 over 1 times x plus 1 over 3, and so on to x plus 1 over 16. What we'll notice is that in each of these cases, we're essentially just taking the term to be differentiated and removing it from the product, because the derivative of x plus a constant is just 1. We multiply by 1, that doesn't change anything. So we have some understanding of what each of those 16 terms is going to look like, because as we iterate through all of these 16 um, parts of the product, each of them is going to look like this. We just take out that term that we're differentiating. Once we add those all up, we're going to have a very big expression here. So we want to try to simplify the notation we're using to think about these products so that we can deal with them a little bit easier. First of all, we're looking at a sum, so we can use the sigma notation, and we know we're going to have 16 terms, so we can iterate through each of those. The question is, is there a general form that we can use to write these products when we take out one of the terms? Well, one way to think about that is by starting with the original product. What we had up here originally is the product from n equals 1 to 16 of x plus 1 over n. That's what we have right here. When we differentiate, each of these terms is going to have one of the parts taken out. What we want to ask is, if we take the original expression, take out one of the terms, how can we express that? Well, if we multiply by something, and we want to do the reverse of multiplying so that it goes away, 
that means that we actually want to divide by the term that we're taking out. So for example, if we're looking at this second term here, if we have the x plus 1 half in this original product, but we want to take that out, another way to say that is that we are dividing by x plus 1 half. And as we iterate through, the part that we're dividing out is going to be 1 over k, because k is telling us which of these terms we're looking at. So this is the expression for our derivative that we want to apply at x equals 0. And now that we've done the actual step of differentiation, we can plug in x equals 0 and move on to getting our final result. So that'll give us the sum from k equals 1 to 16 of the product from n equals 1 to 16. This x is just 0, so we have 1 over n on the top divided by 0 plus 1 over k, that's just going to be 1 over k. Let's look at this product right here, because as we iterate through, this product is essentially a constant with respect to k. It doesn't change as we iterate through the index. So this part right here, as we plug in values of n, we're going to get 1 over 1 times 1 over 2 times 1 over 3 times 1 over 4, and so on, up to 1 over 16. What we could say then, is we're taking 1 over 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 up to 16. That's going to be 16 factorial. So we can pull that out of the sum. And then we're looking at the sum from k equals 1 to 16 of 1 over 1 over k. That's going to be k. And from there, we get 1 over 16 factorial. The sum of the first 16 integers has a fixed form, it's going to be 16 times 16 plus 1 over 2. And I'll put a link in the description for a video explaining where this sum comes from. From here, we can take this 16 to the bottom. So we'll have 1 over 16 factorial over 16 times 16 plus 1 gives us 17 over 2. This 16 factorial over 16 will give us a 15 factorial times 17 over 2, and that is our answer. So the way that we got here was first by investigating how the product rule works for more than two functions, using an example with three functions. From there, we got that we were looking at a sum of 16 different giant terms. But by turning it into a sigma notation, we were able to simplify the problem so we get to our answer just like this.